It's, uh, well, welcome to my Nepal vlog. Um, I just arrived here in Kathmandu and just checked in into my hostel, Trekkers Hostel. And uh, yeah, super excited to see the city. Um, and let's see what the coming seven days hold in store. Um, I know that seven days might be a bit little for Nepal. Uh, a lot of people stay much longer, but it is what it is. So let's make the best out of it. Like most tourists, my first stop in Nepal was Tamil in Kathmandu. Tamil is very popular for its vast accommodation opportunities, restaurants and shops. This vibrant part of Kathmandu has so many things to offer, especially its spiritual vibe. Tamil is also known as Nepal's backpacker haven because it offers plenty budget accommodation. For my hostel bed I paid less than $3 per night. After wandering around through Tamil, I found myself to Durban Square, which is the main attraction of Kathmandu. Durban Squares are found in multiple cities in Nepal and they were always adjacent to royal palaces because that's where kings and queens were crowned. Due to its historical significance and its showcasing of Newa architecture, Durban Square in Kathmandu is part of the UNESCO World Heritage List. Newa architecture is particularly known for its delicate wood carvings. If you want to visit Durban Square, you will have to buy a ticket, which I think is definitely worth it. Durban Square also hosts multiple temples and shrines, and you can get blessed there, which I did, as you can see. I asked the motorcycle driver to drive me around a bit for Kathmandu. I think exploring the city from a motorbike is also a fun way to get around. Just be a little bit careful since you will most likely not wear a helm and drivers are a little bit crazy. <laughs> I will spare you and not try to pronounce the name, but this temple is one of the oldest religious sites in all of Nepal and it's also known as the monkey temple because there are so many monkeys. Oh, <sighs> I have to do more cardio when I'm back home. Oh my god. Yup, climbing up to the temple is definitely a challenge. Oh my god. But as you can see, it was more than worth it. In case you're wondering what the Buddhas I represent, they do represent the ability of Buddha to see everything. There are also many small vendors where you can buy souvenirs and religious artifacts. I bought some praying flags, which are now hanging in my room. The only thing that you will have to keep in mind, aside from the very tedious way up, is that Kathmandu usually is quite smoggy, so you will not have the best views. However, I think it's still worth it. There are also a few places where you can grab a drink or a snack. I grabbed the beer and had the most stunning view over the stupa. I took a different road back down, and this one was very quaint and green, so if you walk up, you can also go back on a different way. I walked back to Chamo and had the best Nepalese food ever. Kathmandu feels very safe and I had no problem whatsoever walking around at night. Okay, so this is the second full day in Nepal. I'm starting it at the Gardens of Dreams in Kathmandu, which is a neoclassical styled garden built in the 1920s. And uh, yeah, it's really nice to uh, take a take a breath because um, the city is a bit chaotic. But I like it a lot actually, but it's just nice to have a bit of uh, tranquility around here. So yeah. The garden was built in the early 20th century and was inspired by British gardens. The idea was to create British landscape design back in Kathmandu. The garden has six pavilions, each designed to reflect each season of Nepal. It's a beautifully designed space and ideal if you want to catch a break from the bustling city. After visiting the park, it was time for me to get a haircut. I went to a local hairdresser and just saw you what happens. No English communication, no fear. So, I think the haircut turned out very nice. He he put so much effort into it. Uh, I think I was there for 40 minutes. He exfoliated my face, he shaved me with a knife. He even massaged me, which was very nice. But yeah, it was part of, you know, asking for more money. Because at the end, he didn't tell me the price he told me to to, you know, make make an offer, so, yeah. 
I overpaid for sure, but it's worth it, I think. After my fancy Nepali haircut, it was time for me to head to Bhaktapur. I never experienced more crazy driving than in Nepal. Just a heads up, don't be confused when you enter Bhaktapur, you will definitely have to buy a ticket. There are several reasons why you want to visit Bhaktapur. First of all, it's a UNESCO National Heritage Site. That's due to the fact that Bhaktapur has a lot of temples and, like Kathmandu, also has a Durban Square. You can climb on the temples and have a great view over the city, which I did, and you can also marvel at the delicate arts handicrafts. Just like Tamil, Bhaktapur has a small inner city with many narrow alleyways. You can just wander through, marvel at the small stores and vendors, and can buy a lot of nice handicrafts and souvenirs. Bhaktapur is particularly known for woodcrafts and pottery. Just as in Kathmandu, there's a lot of novel architecture to look at. I spent most of the afternoon just wandering around, soaking in the atmosphere and the vibes. I was very lucky that my trip aligned with Nepalese New Year, which usually takes place in April. As you can see, the preparations for the festivities were already ongoing. My recommendation is that you sit down at Durban Square and have a beer at one of the many restaurants that overlook the square. Hi, hey, good morning from Bhaktapur. Um, so, uh, I have about two hours left in the city. So, yeah, I'm gonna wander around a bit more in the old uh, center. Yeah, <laughs> come join me. The Nepalese calendar is approximately 56 years and 8 months ahead of our Gregorian calendar, which explains that New Year is in April. Usually the festivities are celebrated through rituals, which include animal sacrifices and dinner gatherings. Don't ask me how these two are related. The next day I headed to Nagakot, which is famous for hiking and its serene nature. As always in Nepal, the ride there was very adventurous, especially riding through the mountains with my driver was quite interesting. I chose to stay in a homestay in the mountain with a Nepalese family. They were super friendly and arranged a Sherpa to take me around in the mountains. Unfortunately, the view was not clear. I was supposed to see the Himalayan mountains, but it unfortunately didn't happen. Nevertheless, my local guide showed me around the rural houses and explained how the traditional Nepali families live. Uh -huh. And that's the cooking place, Shafim. They have this kind of material here. Mm -hmm. now it's closed. It was really fascinating to see how people live in rural Nepal. Very self-sufficient and of course also very simplistic. My guide has spent his whole life in the area, and even climbed Mount Everest. I was very impressed by him, and then he also introduced me to some of his friends. Nepalese people are great. They are super welcoming and open to talk to you, and of course they are more than happy to show you around. I'm super grateful for all these interactions I've had with them. Okay, so you can really feel the altitude up here, so I just bought a bag of chips, and wait, just have a look. See how bloated they are? Uh huh. And here. Ah, okay. What we'll see on the way. Okay. We also took a trip stop at Nagakot City where I bought a snack and then I took the motorcycle to the viewpoint of Nagakot to see the sunset. The sunset was awesome, however I did not dare to climb the viewing tower. As you can see, it doesn't look that trustworthy. And I don't know, I don't know where the next hospital is, so I'd rather stay put. The motor ride back to the hostel concluded my first day. The next day, me and some friends that I've met at the homestay headed out for a scenic hike. We passed by some locals going after their day, and then we stopped by a viewing point. So this is what it's supposed to look like, yes. and this is what it looks like. <laughs> of course, the disappointment of not being able to see Mount Everest didn't stop us from exploring. <laughs> Our next stop was a viewing point, which I actually dared to climb, and the view we had there was quite fantastic. We also again met very nice Nepalese locals. <laughs> Nepalese people are so crazy. I love it. 
our guide continued to familiarize us with the local way of living. This family's house was severely damaged in the last Nepali earthquake. Nevertheless, they still succeeded in subsisting on their own. Walking got us hungry, so we had some local lunch and then celebrated the New Year's quite early by having our beer at 12 in the morning. Hello. <laughs> we also made some friends in the process. Is this you? They were so fascinated by our phones. Then we head back to Nagakot city where we hung out at the nicest restaurant. I can highly recommend that you go there and enjoyed the rest of the evening. In the night we celebrated the Nepali New Year's with our host and a lot of Nepali liquor. The next morning I soaked in what I could from the tranquility and headed back to Kathmandu. It was another rough and crazy ride and we actually got stuck in a parade. Like I said, New Year's festivities. I spent the last day walking around the largest Buddha stupa in Kathmandu, reflecting what a wonderful time I've had in Nepal and grateful for all the people I've met and the memories I've created. Nepal is a truly special place and you should be very happy if you get the chance to visit it. Okay, so um, my time in Nepal has officially come to an end and uh, yeah, what can I say? What a nice, crazy place uh, this, this country is. It really, it, it, it's really great. Uh, but um, yeah, thank you so much for joining in into this adventure and uh, I, hope, I hope you liked my video and uh, yeah, maybe I see you on my next adventure.